Hello everybody, it's Chris, and today we're doing something non-Amiga-ish. I'm uh, revamping the solar on my house, so I had to make myself some new MC4s, and I just wanted to give you a quick how-to on MC4s. I'm using 10 gauge solar grade cable, uh, it's UV resistant, and it's, uh, you can do, if you're lucky enough and can afford solid core, but this is a, you know, normal threaded 10 gauge wire. This is an MC4 crimper. These are MC4 wrenches. Ooh, they're just like plastic turds, and I'll show you what they do. Um, your solar kit will come with these barrels. Sometimes you can get them fused. Sometimes uh, you can just get the bare ends. So I just buy the bare ends, and this little special wrench has a little tool on the end that clips into here and allows you to separate the two halves. Now, you want to remember, like, you have two halves. Well, which which one is which? Which one is positive? Which one is negative? I always use positive, and this is your negative. How do I know that? Mainly from trial and error. Um, when I build the connectors, I always, you know, put one end in each. I separate them, and I do one positive, one negative. And uh, every device that you connect to it is always going to pretty much let you know that this is going to be positive, because the, like, this is a coupler, for example, and it actually has a plus on it and a minus. Well, you can see that the plus is only going to go into this unit. So, always the female ends are going to be your positives. And when I made these two right here, I also mark my positives so I know. And on my wire, I usually choose the positive wire to the one that has the writing that says solar grade UV resistant cable 10 gauge. So that's what I go by um, for my positive on the just for memory so I know when I'm running my cable which one's positive and I'll put a piece of captain tape around it and put a nice plus on there so how do you build yourself a connector well they're kinda like one-offs maybe twos what you need to do is this when you get a connector it's gonna be like this separate the connector into your positive and your negative unscrew this barrel it'll have a little clicky sound and the reason is this do you see these little tabs right here well inside here is a weather packing silicone kind of bushing that's gonna be a gasket when you put this on here now your good caps are gonna have rubber in the top too but they also have these little uh, like plastic things like nubs in northeast southwest on the circle so when you start clicking this Hear that? Well, I don't want to do it too much because it will take these and bend them around the cable, making a weather tight seal. And then you also have the waterproofing here. And you have two ends that you use one for the female, one for the male. The male end is always going to get the bigger of the stick, just remember that. And the female end is always going to get the little tiny one. The little, the little the smaller of the two and the reason is is because they fit together and click in there's a depression on one of these when you finally click them in boop, they hold uh, there's also clicks on them for when you shove them through the barrel they will click and grab before you tighten up your piece so using the pliers here if you screw up you can always if you're clicking and it, it, it like uh oh you can release it here and open it back up. What you want to do is you want to take your wire and we'll do one. Okay, so I separated my wire. We're going to get the one with the positive here, right? And 10 gauge, so strip your wire. You don't need to strip it a whole bunch. And if you're like me on your on your pliers here, you'll have the 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, if you flip it over, it's got the 10s. I don't know why, but it grips it in a different way, and it strips it fine. So give my wire a twist. Where did I put my piece? And what you want to do is I fold my wire over, lay it in the channel, like so. When you put it in, now when you put it in the pliers here, You're going to stick it in so the nubs, right, these two little nubs are facing down. They're on the, you'll see on the pliers here, there is a little, like, kind of an M 
well not really an M but a semicircle here and not on the bottom it has a smaller one what you want to do is put them in so this side is facing up what's going to happen is it's going to go into these grooves here and there's three levels depending on your cable it's usually 10 12 14 your pliers may vary vary your your yeah your pliers may vary so when you put these in here and crimp it's going to crush this fold it over the cable and then put a depression to lock the wire in now once it's in you'll have these two pieces so let's pretend I have my wire crimped right I need to if this pops out put this in here like so or you can even slide it over your wire a little bit you know even if you have to hang it off your wire that's fine push this piece in whoops on the threaded end push this piece through down and down and it'll click and you shouldn't be able to remove it easily but do not forget to put this on the wire first just before you tighten it down and click your your line and don't forget to put this on because that kind of really sucks so when you crush it you put your wire on let's say I crumped I crimped the tip threaded end push it through drop it on the floor your piece goes in with the end on of course and what you do is you lock this and when now I'm pull my wire out for example when you get finger tight use your MC4 wrench on the cap and then the other wrench slide over the connector and click it tight now I don't want to do mine entirely because I don't want to kill this clip these will wrap around you'll notice you'll have your peg through there and you'll see it I don't know if you can see it in here this is a double you'll see the brass in there and the idea is that when you have it complete on both ends the positive and the positive here it'll go and lock in how do you remove it well if you have really good fingernails you can squish and pull but they recommend taking the T here and inserting it into the piece and then you can just pull and separate the two easily it keeps the clips from over stressing I don't know once they're on, they're usually on forever for me. And that is the parts of an MC4. I want to do an instructional video and you drop all your stuff. I know, I saw that thing. It was blue. It's blue. How can you miss it on tan carpet? Oh my God. That took 10 minutes. Be careful losing these things. I don't know what the heck happened. That sucker just disappeared into no man's land. So doing one I'm gonna do one I don't know so you'd repeat the process on the other side using the small stick the big girl here gets the little one and the male gets the larger diameter one here you push these in it'll be tight push these in it'll be tight and then when you push them in all the way, don't forget to put your wire holder on. Click it, tighten it up, and you're pretty much done. You can give them a test. When you're fully completed, they'll look like this. These are mine, and what you can do is, I don't know if it's going to be clear or not, but you can look at the cable here on the side. You see those little dots? That is just all of these fingers here crushed around the cable forming a, a good seal and then of course the silicone will be the uh, this is my positive the silicone ring will be your actual weather pack there is also another o-ring at the top where this would insert into the positive when you click lock them it is then sealed against weather here sealed against weather here sealed against weather here and you can't you're not pulling these apart you can really give them a tug and you're not normally going to be under that much stress 
like I said, to remove them, you can either stick your fingers in here really good and give them a pull. You'll see the O-ring and then separate. And that is how you do an MC4 connector for a solar panel. If you're building them yourself, this is 10 gauge solar wire. UV resistant is the important thing. Some people like to run a positive and a negative color, but having these off of my house or on my roof, I don't want a big red wire hanging down. I know which ones are the positive because A, I mark them, B, I always use the, the when they're stranded together like this in a pair, I separate them and I know the ones with the writing on there are my positive because it actually, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of embroidered into the, into the wire. It says 10 AWG premium solar wire above ground or underground resistant to sunlight. 60 C. Is that 60 degrees Celsius? 250 V. 250 volt. That is just how I know my wire. And once this is done, I actually, you can have, I have fuses that go in here too, so it'll be a fuse in the middle um, for each one. And then you're safe, you're secure, and you know your connections are good and weatherproof. So I hope this helps you learn how to do an MC4. Uh, I bought this Chineseium kit off of eBay and this was uh, I believe like $22. It came with 10 ends, two couplers for damn dropping stuff. 10 ends or 10 pieces, right? So 10 units, two couplers, enough parts to do the male and the female of each one, two wrenches, the crimper, and a carrying case. It's not like Renogy level stuff. But it's good enough for me. But they work even if you break them. You know, you got you got plenty more. So I have ten. I've done one. I have two more to do down here in the basement where the solar comes in off the charge controller to the battery bank and the inverters. And then I have the two upstairs for each of the new panels that are replacing the three of the old panels. And then both of those will combine into one, combine into the one line that runs down here. And then this side will have one on this side that goes to the charge controller. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.